Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're going to do a look inside or a disassembly, whatever you want to call it, of this knife. This is the Ferrum Forge Stinger Titanium Frame Lock. This is a full titanium frame lock. Um, Nitro V steel blade, very much a Ferrum Forge knife. It's got a lot of Ferrum Forge characteristics to it. Nice and rounded everywhere. But anyway, all that stuff's for the review. Uh, the reason I wanted to take this knife apart to look at it is because of just a couple things that are a little bit different than your average frame lock, like this backspacer back here that is not really a backspacer. So, um, and I'm talking about that just a little bit as part of the milling process and stuff that had to go into that. So let's get going. We need a number six and a number eight. Torx bit on this knife. It's really simple. It's two screws. One of the things I like about Ferrum Forge is... They do keep things pretty simple most of the time. So that's cool. I've owned a few of their, a few of their knives. I've owned a few of the uh, uh, budget Chinese made ones like this one here. And I've owned full Ferrum Forge made right by them in California. And I've owned some of their mid techs made by other companies in the United States. There's what we're looking for right there. Got it. This is screwed right into the titanium, which is not one of my favorite things. But the reason I'm telling you that is to be careful. Do not strip that screw out because that is bad juju for the knife. Pivot is... Super tight, but it's okay because it is captive on this side. That is, in my opinion, one of the coolest pivots made right there. And you see that stuff on my fingers. I've been sharpening knives. And I thought, well, I'm going to make a video while I'm at it. And that's super tight. There we go. Like that. Release some of the pressure. My little tool. And it is being stubborn. There we go. There we go. And as you can see, one of the things about this knife that makes it kind of interesting. Is there's your pivot captive. One of the things with Ferrum Forge is they don't really use very big pivots because the way they design their knives, the geometry of the lock bar and the stop pin and the location of everything, there is not a whole lot of pressure put on the pivot or on the stop pin, really. It all kind of works together. So, as you can see right there, that is screwed directly into the titanium. Not a favorite thing. It's got a nice little standoff deal there for alignment. A little alignment peg, I guess you would call that. And there's where your stop bar goes. And But you can see that this backspacer is milled out of one entire slab is milled out of one piece. It's not a separate piece. Uh, does that make it any better? Well, instead of having two seams in the back, you only have one, so I can only think that could help a little bit. You're going to have less chance of your uh, scale slipping side to side to throw off your centering. So I think that's something. Um, and probably chances are this is going to be milled a lot more flat, being that it's milled instead of just cut off of a sheet that's already set to thickness. So not to say that that's how they do it, but... Um, I imagine that's how a lot of knife companies do it. Otherwise, it's pretty much your normal affair. There is your stainless steel lock insert, and it's got a uh, built-in over travel stop right onto it, like a lot of knife companies do. Uh, there is your ceramic detent ball. There's the other side of that backspacer. Um, there is your pocket clip, which is also screwed right into the titanium. And you can see that the screw's been ground off just a little bit to keep it inside the scale. Uh, 
Again, not my favorite way of doing things, screen right into titanium, but that's what they did. I am not sure what that's all about. Something. So, uh, yeah. Very simple. It is nice and clean, though. It's built nice and clean. The knife's not really super dirty. So, cleaning it up is going to be pretty simple. This is my cleaning solution. It's the EDCI. It uh, not only cleans, but it prevents corrosion. So, I'm good with that. I like that a lot. I'm going to clean that inside of that now. As you can see by my cloth or my paper towel. But there is not a lot of dirt and stuff in here because I take pretty good care of this knife. And it wasn't that long ago that at the last time I cleaned it. It does have stainless steel washers to keep the bearings from running right against the titanium. Which is also a good thing. Because ceramic bearings will wear into the titanium. Nitro V steel. There's your markings on there for Nitro V. And a little bit of crud on there that doesn't want to come off. Uh, Nitro V, they say it's stainless. Um, it is stainless, but like 154 cm. I have had Nitro V markup on me. I can show you that knife in another video. I'm going to clean the bearings off. All right, and that's that. Bing bada bing. Let's put this baby back together. This side, I really, let's see, is that the show side? No. No. That's the show side. Let's put our pivot on like that. Try to pick up the washer without fingernails. <laughs> there we go. Like that. Uh, it's really nice having that captive pivot. Now let's put the F up where it belongs. If you put the F up, like you see there, for fair and forge, if you put the F up, you know you're Alignment's going to work out right. You know you got to pivot right where back where it belongs, which is a super neat thing. Sometimes you have captive pivots, and you can turn them still the wrong way. They don't always go back the right way. So, And if I remember right, this knife was put together like that. Like that. And a little bit of liquid bearings. blade and we'll go with the blade shut how about that let's try that and another set of bearings all right I need those I need those like that and a drip of liquid bearings in there and then that goes in there like that Like that, bingo, snaps right together real easy. I said take a little pressure off the uh, lock bar, and there you have it. How simple is that, right? And then put the screw back in here. Nice and tight. This has still has some Loctite left on it, so. And I believe this one is made by Wii or Civivi, one of the two. But I know it's made in China. Some people like to have a kind of a stink about that when they see nice companies like Fur and Forest doing that. Because they are, you know, they're an American company. But they're just trying to get their knives in the hands of more people. And this knife has had... 
a little bit of lock stick since it was brand new. It's a little bit tight. Centering is perfect, but let's see if we can get a little bit better action out of it. And centering is now a little bit off. Tighten it back up just a little bit. Hopefully it's not all the way. There we go. Oof. Now look at my centering. That's crazy. Not sure what's going on there. Zoom out just a little bit. Ah, uh, what in the heck is going on there? Did something not? And here I thought this was going to be like the easiest video ever. I'm struggling. <laughs> that pivot is not seating correctly. Still not seating correctly. Well, you're seeing it live, guys. There, it's seated correctly. Weird. I to make sure, absolutely positive, I am not cross-threading that in any way. Oh yeah, I can feel the difference. Oh yeah, now it's way too tight and the centering's way off the other way. There we get the centering on. Oh yeah. And let's see. We can tighten it just a tiny bit. Perfect. That's really nice. Oh yeah, better, better, better. Anyway, there it is. The assembly, disassembly of the Ferrum Forge Stinger Frame Lock. Could be a little bit smoother, but that's just the way it goes. There you have it. Hope you guys are having a great day. Get your wife and kids, get out and enjoy the outdoors, turn off the TV, all that good stuff. Toad sticker out.